Okay, today we're gonna to start unit number five. And unit number five is kind of a continuation of the last section of unit four. The last thing we learned about in unit four was energy. And we'd like to take that study of energy and introduce you to a new form of energy called heat. Before we do, I wanna remind you of the key idea with energy. What makes energy so important? It's this idea of energy conservation which says that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but it can change forms and it can transfer from one object into another. Because there are so many different forms of energy, it turns out to be super useful. Physics, chemistry, biology, studying the human body, studying how your car works, studying how much um, it's going to cost you to power your home. These are all areas where we see energy. In fact, there is no area of study that does not involve energy. So, so far, we have looked at mechanical energy, and we saw there were three types of mechanical energy. Gravitational, elastic, and kinetic. I showed you examples of one type of energy turning into another, and in this example, we're going to push the marching band bear across my lab desk and you'll see it started with kinetic energy, but eventually it stops and all the kinetic energy is gone. The question is, where did the energy go? Since you can't destroy energy, it had to turn into another form. Well, friction can create thermal energy, okay? It can make the object get hotter. Okay, we can prove this to ourselves by pushing an object across another object and viewing it with an infrared camera. So after I pushed a wooden block across a wooden board, I took a picture with the thermal camera and you can see the spot where the two objects dragged across each other got a little bit hotter than the objects on either side where there was no friction. It's not a great change in temperature. We're still around 21.3 degrees um, Celsius. So we're still right around room temperature, but there is a slight increase in the temperature due to friction. We can see this on a larger scale. If we run a car's tire wheel, I guess I should say, and we jam on the brakes, you can see that the rotor gets hotter, it starts glowing red. The reason it's glowing red is because that kinetic energy is turning into thermal energy. So it's a, con it's a conservation of energy where it's being turned from mechanical to thermal. I wanna make sure before we go any farther that we understand the distinction between the two most important terms in unit five, and they are the terms temperature and heat. So before we get into heat in a lot of detail, let's make sure we know the difference. Temperature measures the average kinetic energy of the molecules that make up a substance or the particles that make up a substance. So if I have a fish tank full of air, the air particles are not sitting still, but they're in random motion. Temperature measures the average, very important, kinetic energy of those particles. So you can see as I raise the temperature of the system, the particles have more and more kinetic energy. Temperature is directly related to the average kinetic energy of those particles. Higher temperature, higher average kinetic energy. Heat, on the other hand, is a measure of energy added added to the molecules. Heat is not a thing so much as it is a process. The letter we're going to use for heat is a capital Q, and heat is something that enters or leaves an object. Heat is not something the object possesses. Yes, the object possesses some thermal internal energy, kinetic energy to be exact for these molecules that are moving around but heat is the term we use when we add or remove energy from the object. How do you add energy? You need it to be hot on the outside and cold on the inside, and then heat will progress through the walls into those molecules. 
How do we get heat out? Hot on the outside. I'm sorry, hot on the inside, cold on the outside. Now the energy is going to leave. So heat can go in, positive heat, or heat can come out, negative heat. We now have two terms that I introduced you to, one in unit four and one in unit five that mean the exact same thing. So let's make sure you can distinguish between them. Energy added to an object. That's the definition of work, and it's also the definition of heat. So how are they different? Work is something you could see on a macroscopic scale, a very large scale. For instance, when I take this cart with the fish tank on top and I apply a force, I did work. I gave it organized kinetic energy. So work was caused by a force. It affects the entire object equally. The entire object moved in one specific direction. It was organized. And the example was me pushing the cart. If on the other hand, I took a hot object and put it on top. Heat is going to pass through the glass into these molecules. We are still adding energy to the system, but now we're having energy added by a difference in temperature. It affects the molecules, not the object entirely, but the molecules that make up the object. It's disorganized. All the molecules are going to be moving in different directions. And an example of this is warming up water on a stove. So two words, work, capital W, heat, capital Q, mean the same thing, but are caused by different things. Work is caused by force, heat is caused by a difference in temperature. Work makes the whole object move in one organized direction, Heat makes the molecules move in a disorganized fashion. Okay, both of them are going to be measured in joules, at least ideally. However, I want you to be aware that not everybody across the globe is going to use joules as their unit for energy. Joules is the international standard for energy. One joule represents 100 grams one meter above the ground, and when I drop it, that will be one joule worth of energy turning from potential gravity in the kinetic, one joule. A hundred grams from a height of one meter is approximately one joule. That's the unit we should be using. However, there is an older metric unit that still has people using it in this country and that's calories with a small c. And a calorie is defined to be the energy needed to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Just so you can visualize, this is about a gram of water. This is a five milliliter beaker filled about one fifth of the way. So this is a milliliter of water, which is one gram of water. If I make the temperature up by just one degree, the energy that I added is one calorie. I hope you realize that this is a really small amount of energy. Because it's so small, the energy readings for calories can become huge. So people realize right away it'd be more convenient to describe it in kilocalories, thousand calories. We use this for food. And oftentimes in our country, we don't write it as kilocalories, we write it as calories with a capital C. So when you see calories with a capital C, it's referring to kilocalories, food calories. Food calories, kilocalories, is the energy to raise a kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. So this is one kilogram, one liter of water. This again is one gram. So you can see the great difference between the two. This would be normal calories. This would be food calories. Raising this by one degree Celsius would be one kilocal.
There's another unit called BTU. You'll see this in America sometimes with our heaters and air conditioners. HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Okay, and a BTU is just like calories and kilocalories, but it's the energy to raise a pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. So talk about bad units, BTU. Finally, we have a unit called a kilowatt hour. And that is the unit you're going to use in your house to measure how much electricity you might have used to heat things up or do other jobs. It's the energy from a one kilogram, uh, I'm sorry, a one kilowatt appliance being used for one hour. It's a lot of energy. Okay, so make sure you know these units and make sure you know the conversions. One small C calorie is 4.184 joules. One kilocalorie or food calorie or calorie with a capital C is 1,000, I'm sorry, it's 4,184 joules. Please fix this. On your reference sheet, one BTU equals 1,055 joules. That space was used to indicate the delimiter between the hundreds place and the thousands place, but you're used to seeing commas, so put a comma in there. You got kilowatt hours, the joules. We got tons of TNT in the joules. We're not gonna be using that yet. Electron volts, the joules. We're not gonna use that one yet. So right now you're gonna be converting using the top four. So here is a little portable heater. It's rated at 60,000 BTU on maximum setting. Convert that into joules. Okay, show your work. Here is my health app, and it tells me I walked 7.11 kilometers, 711, that's where I was headed, okay, kilometers, and I used a total of 1,870 kilojoules worth of energy. I'd like you to convert that into joules. You're not gonna find it on your sheet, just remember that kilo means thousand, just like it did with kilometers or kilograms. Okay, here is a nutrition label from another country. Lots of other countries measure their energy in kilojoules. And I'd like you to convert it into calories with a capital C. Okay, these are kilocalories or food calories, and that's what we use in our country. Finally, I'd like you to use a nutritional label from our country, which is 160 calories, and convert that into joules so someone in another country could understand what it is. So here's my little crackle, okay, candy bar. This guy has 44 calories, so I want to make sure you guys know what it means when we're talking calories. Believe it or not, that means that this has enough energy to heat up this much water by 44 degrees Celsius. So it could not get this boiling, but it could get it really hot. Pretty amazing the amount of energy that is found in the food. Finally, I'd like to convert a kilowatt hours into joules. And again, use your conversion sheet to do that. I wanna remind you of power. Power, again, is how much energy you're using per second. We're going to be doing this all the time with heat. So if we have a hair dryer, which is producing lots and lots of energy, it's producing 1,875 joules every second. That's what watts mean. If you're going to use it for 20 minutes, you would produce a lot of energy. You'd be able to heat up a lot of stuff. Okay, so do that calculation for me. How much energy are you using with your hair dryer? If you're using the full 1875 watts and you're using it for a time frame of 20 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna pause it there. We didn't do a lot today, but we laid the foundation in terms of units, in terms of the difference between heat and work, and in terms of being able to convert from one thing to another. So make sure you're able to deal with all the stuff we talked about today before we start getting into some heavy duty calculations.